I'd like to introduce Liam Craddock. Uh, Liam's an IT engineer by day, and he came to Liverpool as a student and never left. Hi, my name's Liam. I, uh, I'm a bell ringer in Liverpool. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, bells have been chimed with ropes and levers in this country for about 500 years. And in the 16th century, ringers started replacing those levers with wheels and pulleys to allow the bells to be rung around a full circle. Uh, doing this gives you a lot more control over the bell and um, means it's a lot less physically demanding to ring uh, and more efficient. So even children can ring some of the heaviest bells in the country, which can be up to four tons apiece. Um, <laughs> um, there are about 40,000 bell ringers in the country, um, partly because it's so easy to do and anybody can do it. And they come from a really wide variety of backgrounds and ages. Bells come in sets. Uh, they're tuned to, the, to a scale the same way music is. And to start off with, they're rung from the highest notes through to the lowest notes. And that sequence is called rounds. Um, that's what all ringing starts and finishes with. Um, but it would be very boring to ring that all the time, so ringers like to change the order in which bells are rung. The simplest way of doing this is for the conductor to give a verbal instruction to the people who are ringing uh, and tell pairs of bells to switch the order in which they're ringing. And each different sequence that you produce is called a change, and that's called call change ringing. More commonly, um, ringers will all learn a specific pattern of changes to ring. Um, the simplest one of these is called plain hunt, and it's, it's very simple to follow. Um, and by adding small modifications to it, um, you can produce uh, a piece which is, takes a bit longer to ring, it's a bit more complex, and it's a bit more interesting, and it produces a larger number of changes. And the one which 90% of ringers will ring on a week-to-week on a -week basis is called plain bob doubles. Um, it takes about two minutes, um, it's rung on five bells, um, but by adding further modifications to the order and, and to the method, you can, there's kind of no limit to how complex you can make a piece so something like Bristol Surprise Maximus, with its very grand name, um, looks like that. It's rung on 12 bells. It takes more like half an hour to ring it rather than two minutes. Um, and for that particular one, there's probably only about 1% of ringers in the country could ring that. Um, bells live in churches. So primarily they're rung for church events and uh, member um, events like that. Um, but they're also rung for um, state things. So like the Olympics, jubilees, weddings, funerals, and things like that. Um, and what's my next slide? Yes, for a particularly important um, event, ringers will ring what's called a peel, which is three hours of solid ringing. It's at least 5,000 changes, and it's really difficult to do, which is why you ring it for special occasions. And um, more often, ringers will ring quarter peels, which are done more recreationally to work on method, method learning and striking. And striking is a big thing, because bells can't ring traditional um, tunes like you can on musical instruments. So. The focus is on getting perfectly even gaps between all the bells to produce a smooth, pleasant sound, and it's difficult to do. And there are competitions when, uh, nationally and locally to find the bands that are best able to do that. And, and as being with a band, everything you do in ringing is part of a band, because you can't ring them on your own. So the social life is, is very strong. You ring together, and then you drink together, <laughs> generally. Um, so which <laughs> it kind of makes my job very easy as social secretary of the Liverpool branch, because everybody's already got a pint in their hands, which is good. Um, people come to ringing through a really wide range of places. Some people do it as like a service to the church or Baden-Powell or Duke of Edinburgh. Um, some people see us drinking in the pub and that's what, do what we're doing. And some people get caught throwing stones at the church and pulled up the tower like one of my friends was. Um, <laughs> um, oh, mm, I've lost my head. Um, yeah, people come that way, but that's not why they stay. They stay because it's a lot of fun and um, it's really challenging. And the people who do it are great, but there's constantly challenges, challenges and there's constant rewards for that. And if you're the kind of person who gets hooked on learning, you're the kind of person who gets hooked on ringing as well. Um, every ring of bells is different and wildly different. And being able to ring literally opens a lot of doors to places that you would never normally be able to go. So ringers like to travel around, ring at um, cathedrals and offshore as well. Um, there are about 5,000 rings of bells in the UK. Um, and there's a long history of that. And every time you go ringing, you kind of add to that history. And I like to think that in 100 years' time, people will look back over Peel Records and see that I've done something worthwhile and contributed to ringing in Liverpool. Um, in Liverpool itself, there are about 22 towers that have regular practices. And if you ever wanted to go to one of them, you'd get a really warm welcome. You're always looking for new people. And um, even if you don't want to go actually have a ring, it's, it's a unique experience to be up there and see what it's actually like. 
so I would highly recommend it. Um, if you want to know what about ringing in Liverpool itself, uh, you can go to merseybells.co.uk or grab me afterwards or drop me an email. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you.